only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Licensing is to keep outsiders out so the inns can charge us higher prices. There you go. One of the few remaining places where it's still easy to start a taxi business is Washington, D.C. These drivers like that. It's, it's the last bastion of free entrepreneurial system in the industry in America. But now this lobbyist wants to end that freedom. You have to regulate. He wants to bring the dumb medallion rule to Washington, D.C. He wrote a bill that would cut the number of taxis allowed in half. There's too many taxi cabs. These D.C. drivers don't think so. Kill the medallion bill! Kill the medallion bill! They like being allowed to work. But the lobbyist convinced this D.C. city councilman to sponsor his bill. We want to professionalize our taxi cab system. Professionalize the system? What's that mean? Well, we want to make sure that the customer has a good riding experience. That sounds good, but... What is this? What is this? Regulations already in the book subject every driver to petty harassment. This is unacceptable right here. Still, at least in Washington, the open entry rules allow newcomers to enter the business. Washington, D.C. is the only major city in America that allows an open entry. Isn't that good for poor people? No, it's not good. A medallion system is what is needed. But that squeezes newcomers out. And newcomers should be squeezed out. Why? Because this is a regulated industry. How much you get paid to lobby for this? Well, I get paid by the hour. And my rate Per hour is $775. This man, you know, he is above money. I can't blame him. But don't hustle me. I'm told you're paid by the taxi king, Jerry Schaefer. He's using you to squeeze the competition out. I'm being paid not by the taxi king, but by the taxi... Bunch of taxi kings, but kings by, and queens and jacks, by, to by, keep by, the little guys out. Well, by, right, by some... Kings, queens, jacks, and, and just some uh, l uh, poor little folks. Poor folks rarely pay lobbyists, and if he gets his regulation, poor people won't become taxi entrepreneurs. But only a few are going to be able to afford it, if any. Washington has been sort of an open place for taxis, being able to become a taxi driver. That's good. We love it. So why monkey with good? When folks have some ideas about different legislation, our job is to implement it. You've only been here four years. How, how many laws have you gotten passed? Oh, many. We are very active uh, here in my office legislatively. You ever repeal any? Um, no, I don't think many have been uh, repealed. Passing new laws adds to the power of politicians, but it makes it much harder to be an entrepreneur. They're going to run me out of business. I'm trying to get out of here. Who decides what you eat? You? Turns out, no. Some towns banned Happy Meals. One banned all new fast food restaurants. My town's mayor wants to limit the salt I can eat. And if you sell certain things that the food police disapprove of, you better watch out. There was a loud banging on the back gate. And I said, what's going on? He goes, we have a warrant to search the premises. Not long ago, federal and state officials raided Rawsome Foods, a food co-op in Los Angeles. They started walking around. They drew their guns. And I'm like, why, why are you drawing guns? They searched me. It seemed like they thought we had cocaine in the papayas or something. Their crime was selling milk that hadn't been pasteurized. They just went into our freezer and they just took gallons and cheeses and whatever they wanted. A year later, the government raided again. They also raided Sharon Palmer's farm, which supplies Rossum with its natural food. These people come and invade, ripped my house apart. They took me down to the county jail, booked me, photographed me like a criminal. Palmer and Rossum's owners were charged with six felonies. They could go to jail. All because... Health officials say raw milk can be downright dangerous. It can. Un needed to kill the bacteria like salmonella that can give you stomach aches or kill you. But raw food buyers say things like this. It's pure and healthy and um, makes me feel good. Oh, please. That's ridiculous. 
But don't free people have a right to be ridiculous? The hell? This is America. How are you going to tell me what I should and shouldn't eat? Right. I eat lots of Dove bars. These aren't good for me. I also eat chicken. The CDC says because people don't wash chicken properly, bacteria in it causes lots of illness and many deaths. But we don't ban chicken. When a government gets between my lips and my throat, I call that an invasion of privacy. Joel Salatin's one of those back-to-the-earth foodies. Hey, pig. Why do you want to drink raw milk? Because I want to. I think it's healthier and it's, it's good for me, and I've drunk it all my life, sometimes legally, sometimes illegally. Most states ban the sale of raw milk, just as they ban unlicensed lemonade stands. Wait, 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 wait. I can't give it to you. Don't drink it. I can get in trouble. Although my lawyer told me that if no one drinks it... Well, I have to get it back and I don't make any money, then this is probably legal. You're silly. <laughs> that indicates this whole societal prejudice against terrible business people. You know, anyone who's in business is a cheater, a villain. The CDC says hundreds of people have gotten sick from raw milk. More than that have drowned in uh, backyard swimming pools. I think we should uh, fill in all the backyard swimming pools and outlaw them. Life is risky. You can die from it. I mean, ultimately, ultimately, you and I should be able to choose our risk. I mean, I think eating Cocoa Puffs and eating Twinkies and drinking Mountain Dew is risky. But I'm not asking for a government to, to tell you that you can't do it. For 30 years, Salatin's farmed 500 acres in Virginia. Hey, turkeys. And he's seen government pass more and more rules. Every day I look over my shoulder, okay, what are they going to find illegal tomorrow? Salatin would like to slaughter his own animals to sell to his neighbors. But as with raw milk, it's only legal if he doesn't make money. You can go into the woods and shoot a deer, put it prominently on the hood of your blazer like an ornament, take it around town in the afternoon sun for uh, a couple of hours, and then take it home, string it up in a tree until you skin it out, cut it up, and feed it to your children. And that's being a great American. But if I take one pig. lamb or one pig and get all the neighbors together, and we have a community killing like they used to do, and one neighbor pays me a penny, I'm a criminal. It's logical to think we need government to protect us. If that is what you think, that's fine. Go, go ask for government protection. But allow my customers and me, who don't have faith in the government, let us opt out. Hey, pigs. Basic food freedom of choice should be as important Stop. as the freedom to worship, speak, or own a gun. What you doing, pigs? What about the freedom to record public officials doing public work? I'm a reporter. Coming up. Well, you going to jail. In America these days, you never know what's legal. You're going away. You're going to be arrested for trespassing. I did nothing. But can police legally arrest you just for filming the authorities? That's next. Our government adds thousands of new laws every year. The feds alone added 80,000 pages of new regulations just last year. Add in state and local laws, and we're drowning in rules. So just disobeying one of these could lead to the police locking me up. So given that the police have the power to lock me up or shoot me, it's important that we be able to keep an eye on them. Fortunately, that's easier today because even our phones have cameras. And a camera is a powerful tool Sir, for, take your hands as off. the Romans said, Sir, watching the watch. Excuse me. You're going away. You're going to be arrested for trespassing. I did nothing. The problem is that often the watchmen don't want to be watched. In Jones County, Mississippi, a highway patrolman told Pete Ayer, stop your RV. Pete's an activist who likes to videotape encounters with authorities. Yes, sir. Open that side door for me, man. Turn that camera off, dude. What's that? You filming? Yeah. Turn it off. How come? Are you filming me? Yes. Turn it off for me. He'd broken no traffic doing, laws, sir? but maybe the police were suspicious of shirtless, tattooed Pete and his big trailer with New Hampshire plates. Pete's friend filmed the encounter and said, I would like to keep everybody accountable in this situation. Apparently, this officer didn't like that. Okay. Another arrived and said, I'm not shutting it off, officer. Are well, you going to jail? Excuse me? Sir, the cops grabbed his camera and arrested him and his friends. They held us in jail, wouldn't let us make phone calls. After about 12 hours, the police let them go. 
They charged me with uh, possession of a beer in a dry county because there was one unopened beer in the refrigerator of the RV. They had nothing else to stick on me. They couldn't charge him with filming the police because that's legal. And that's a good thing. Just outside my office, a cop claimed a bicyclist rode into him on purpose. But then this video turned up and showed that the officer was the aggressor. That cop was eventually fired. Maybe video like this is why some don't want to be filmed. You guys need something? I'm just, this is my front yard. I'm just recording what you're doing. It's my right. Actually, not from the sidewalk. This is my yard. In Rochester, New York, when Emily Good heard police stopping a driver outside her house, she went out on her front lawn to film the encounter. What One did officer didn't like that. that. You. I'm behind us officers when we're doing a public traffic stop. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. Well, stand in your house. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. I'm yes, going to stay in. I was in cotton pajamas. You could tell I was holding nothing. I, I don't think that there's any reason to feel threatened. All I have is a camera. I'm clearly wearing nothing. I have no weapons. It does not matter. You know what? You're going to go to jail. I'm observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. The officer took her to jail and charged her with obstructing governmental administration. I did nothing. I did nothing. I'm not doing it. I think that the young police officer is high on his power. High on his power is a little harsh. Mm -hmm. He's doing his job. No, it's not his job to take people, uh, <laughs> observers, from their own property and put them in jail. A month later, Emily put this video online. It was viewed thousands of times, and some viewers criticized the police. So you post the video on YouTube, and they come back. In uniform, four officers. Police showed up outside a meeting of Emily and her friends and started writing tickets for parking violations, like parking farther than 12 inches from the curb. Can I see it? Can I see the ruler? Her friend taped that. Okay, that's 12 inches from the curb. After the media picked up on the story, the police chief said his officers' actions were inappropriate. Charges against Emily were dropped, but no officer was ever punished. They never are, as far as we know, even when they arrest news cameras. Go away, go away now! So go away go? now! Phil Dads tried to film a police go. pursuit. All right, you're going away. Okay, I'm, I'm on the way, but I'm, I'm asking you. you know, because it's because to... it's an active scene, and you're leaving. Okay, where can I All right, no place. Go away, no. He went away. He moved across the street, but then the officer drove up to him there. Sergeant, I told PIO they told me to go back to the Put it down. Open. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. You're under arrest. You're under they charged Phil with obstructing government. Did you obstruct the government? Absolutely not. At the point I was arrested, I was probably a thousand feet away from the officers. Charges were dropped, but again, the officer was never punished. None of the officers who arrested Pete, Emily, or Phil would talk to us, but the head of one police union sent us this written comment. He says this has become a serious safety issue. I'm afraid something terrible will happen. Well, the opposite is true, because if the, if the officers are doing the right thing, the video is going to show that. True. This hijacker rammed a cop car. The officer shot the hijacker, killed him, and then was exonerated of murder because this video showed he'd acted in self-defense. Are you recording me right now? Yes. Are Some officers now understand that it's just part of the job to be filmed. If you're a police officer, what do you want to do? Make sure it's safe, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, it should look good on YouTube either way. So let's give three cheers for Officer Matt Lyons of Oceanside, California. Make sure you get a good picture of me so you know exactly what I look like. It's refreshing to hear an officer welcome the camera. Hey, remember, my name is Officer Lyons with the Oceanside Police Department. My badge number is 1093. God bless America. Coming up. Should they have the freedom to sell sex? And should they have the freedom to get high? Legal drugs and sex work when we return. <laughs>